Welcome to the Aftershock. I'm Phil Leva, hosting today with Jamin Moore and Alex Morgan, who are currently at the game after a 4-1 to win for the San Jose Earthquakes against DC United. We had goals from Cho Feast, Cade Cow, and a brace from Jackson Yole. But guys, let's get right into what everybody has been talking about. Cade Cow, star, 17-year-old for the San Jose Earthquakes. Jamin, why don't you get us started on some of your analysis on Cade? I mean, how do you analyze this kid? I mean, with that kind of game breaking speed, you know, the world, the world's his oyster. You don't, you, you would think in, in MLS that forwards were, would blow by center backs. And we talk about how it does feel like sometimes, you know, the center backs are too slow, not athletic enough for the league. But in reality, we don't see what happened tonight that often when he got in behind one on one with the keeper and just put on the afterburners. You know, that's just something that that's special. It's you don't see that every week here. And then he adds two assists on top of that. I mean, what a goal by Jackson Yule. His first one, uh, you know, was was just off the charts good. And we'd be talking about that to kick off the show if it wasn't for, you know, this 17 year old that's just about to take the world by storm. You know, what else can you say about that? Well, that second assist was just class from Jackson Yule. The chip over the top to the back post. I'm sorry, from Cade Cal to Jackson Yule. Just incredible there to, to be able to do that. So he has two assists in the match on top of the goal. Pretty awesome stuff from him. Yeah, and I mean, it was actually really exciting to see him combine so well with Jackson Yule. Those are you know two of the best young American players in the league now, two of the most promising young Americans. And to see them combine on the same team tonight was just absolutely electric, I have to say. And this was, you know, it's only at partial capacity here at PayPal Park, but it was probably, uh, you know, the most rocking, uh, roiling atmosphere that I've seen here uh, in a long time, to be honest. Uh, there was just a, a buzz around the stadium and energy when you get to watch a performance like that from Cade Cowell. I mean, it's just majestic to watch him run down the, the wing like that and tear up the field. It looks like he's eating up the field in front of him and uh, blowing by the, the defenders. So, yeah, it was just a really exciting match, and, and the Quakes played with a lot of energy. Florian Youngworth was uh, leading the team from the back line. He had a clearance there at the end that he celebrated like he scored the game-winning goal. And to be honest, it was worth as much as the game-winning goal because the Quakes really dictated that second half. Uh, and, you know, I feel like that uh, most of the match was played in the first half, but they had really good game management skills there in the second as well to really put Absolutely, the game to bed. Alex, and I, I have to say it was really impressive to see Florian Youngworth make that type of a play late into the game, uh, similar to what we saw from Carlos Fierro, again, showing that the players are playing 100% for the team in Matias Almeida's system and are not quitting at any moment, right? There, we didn't see very many lapses in this game aside from the corner kick from in which DC United scored their single goal. And really that was just a matter of, you know, just insanity all around uh, guys running into each other. And then uh, DC kind of just sneaking that goal in there on the quakes. So really there wasn't any, any terrible lapses. And then in that one moment we saw Florian Youngworth make the goal line save when they, you know, did have somewhat of a lapse in, in that one moment. But I do want to say, just to reset here for a second, how impressive it was for the Quakes to come out right off the bat and for Chofis to make a statement by scoring that goal in the first minute as well. I think that was really important for the team, and it set the tone for how the rest of the match went, right, because the Quakes were on the front foot for most of this match. I was going to say, it does feel like Kate is settling in. Or, no, sorry, not Kate. Uh, Chofis is settling in. You, you saw him in various situations tonight be able to play under pressure, hold the ball, play out. He had a few turnovers. He tried some things. That's that's good. You want a player, you want your 10 to be able to try things. Not everything's going to work. But a, quite a bit of what he tried worked. I also like the kind of composure that he had on that that particular finish. It was a good pass from, from Cade, obviously, and it put him into a spot where he could uh, be able to get back onto his left foot and be able to hit it. You know, so the understanding of where he should be, the understanding of where Kay needed to get to, where that pass needed to go in order to give it an optimum spot for Chofis, shows that these players pretty early in the season and, and earlier than any team, obviously, than Matias Almeida has had so far, you know, with, with the earthquakes, they're starting to get onto the same page. Like you, you saw the little things tonight that showed that the players are kind of getting better connectivity with each other. These new players are getting integrated. 
I thought a pretty good, decent game from Eric Rometty as well. And Avicostas, when he came in, actually looked pretty good too. So, the, you know, the, the new players uh, getting some time tonight, uh, you know, I think showed showed pretty well. All had a, had some sort of impact on this game. Um, and, you know, there were moments. There were moments that D.C., you know, had the ball in dangerous situations. There was also, I thought, a, a very key shot block um, uh, by by tonight's uh, left center back uh, starter um, because Alanis had, had gone down with the injury. Uh, Beeson had to step in. And I thought that, you know, that shot block at the moment was kind of key too because it could have been a 2-2 game at that moment if he hadn't gotten in for that kind of like diving uh, shot block. And uh, and because uh, it looked like the team was out of position, JT was a touch out of position, and they had caught the defense uh, kind of leaning too far to one side. So some big performances from, I think everyone had some sort of impact on the game tonight in a positive way. Not everything was perfect, but a lot of positive impacts were, were, were felt by pretty much every starter and most of the substitutes as well. If I had one gripe to make, I mean, yes, I agree with everything you just said, Jamin, especially defensively and the team kind of held together for each other in, in so many instances. Uh, Chofis is finding his place here in the team, but at the same time, we see a third consecutive match in which he picks up a yellow card. Now, in MLS, that isn't necessarily going to affect him in terms of having to pay a fine or losing a game due to suspension until we hit the five card uh, limit. But again, not finding... Uh, kind of like his rhythm in that aspect in terms of like how far can you push it with the referee on the field until you, you know, start accumulating more of those cards. So you know, maybe if that's one little thing to pick on with Chofi so far. So I, I was concerned about that after his kick out in the Houston game, but tonight I wasn't really. Tonight I just think he was getting stuck in, and that's a good sign that he's committing to this project and that he's showing intensity. And I thought it was a brilliant goal he scored. It actually, he scored a very, very similar one against the Oakland Roots in San Jose's preseason game. We saw a little glimpse in that game of you know, what his left foot can do. And it was almost the exact same finish tonight. And you know he was dropping a lot deeper in the first half to get on the ball and help facilitate that ball moving forward. And that's a good thing for the Quakes, uh, to get trophies on the ball in those pockets of space. He was making things happen, uh, a really strong performance from him. I have to say it's so important for Chofis or any player in that position in the attacking midfield to be able to take those shots and put the pressure on the goalkeeper and really to keep the back line in check as well. So for Chofis to continue to add that dimension to the team, it's incredibly important. But I also wanted to note as well that uh, I was really impressed with the layers that the Quakes were able to create throughout the midfield, not just in the first half with the performances that we saw from Chofis and then going down to Jackson Ewell and Rometty and going down to the back line, but in the second half when we saw some of the substitutions made as well when Andy Rios came on and then when we saw some of the other changes in the midfield, how they were able to kind of create a different type of attack and defense. Like it, it, The shape was just a little bit different. So we saw Judson get subbed in, right? So he kind of had like that sweeper role. He was sitting right in front of the uh, the defense there. And then we also saw uh, Rometty and Jackson Yule combining and doing their their things as well. And we saw Andy Rios and Cade Cal in certain moments too, coming back and dropping in and becoming less predictable for the DC United defense to kind of pick up on what they're doing. And I think that's really important moving forward uh, for this team as they continue to play against, you know, better teams. Because DC United, let's be real, guys, this was a soft match for them. They had a ton of injuries and really they just have not found their identity yet as a team. So it's good for the Quakes to settle in, get a 4-1 to victory, and then carry this on to the other matches and the tougher teams they're going to face during the season. And I, I just want to reiterate here, here, Phil, that we are going to get a chance to speak with Cade, to speak with Trophies, and to speak with Matias Almeida uh, very shortly in the post-match press conference. So everybody should stick around for that. Uh, but I agree with your point that, uh, especially in the second half, there was a ton of fluidity in that midfield. And that was a good thing. And there was actually uh, one specific uh, combination set up in the midfield in the second half that really caught my eye. And that was Judson, Rometty, and Jackson Ewell. They three played for the first time together uh, in that midfield triangle after Trophies was subbed off. And I'd love to see more of that uh, to give Jackson, I think, a little bit more freedom to step forward. Uh, because as you saw tonight, he can hit shots from outside the box. That was just a, a sweet, sweet volley he hit to take it out of the air, sort of in a flying, you know, karate kick type movement uh, was just brilliant. And then he also made the late run into the box to score uh, San Jose's fourth goal from 
from Cade's chip. So I'd, I'd love to see a lot more of those combinations. And right now it honestly feels like the Quakes have a ton of different weapons, even though I think, you know, Christian Espinosa had a pretty quiet night tonight. The Quakes were still attacking via Cade. They were still attacking through the middle with Trophies and Ewell. So they just have a lot of different weapons right now. And I think that makes them a super, super exciting team to watch. It, and it, just to it, add one little thing on top of that there, if I could, Jamin, really quickly. Um, when you have that, when you have the players performing in that aspect, when they don't have to, when the team doesn't have to rely so much on one individual to continue to have these like incredible performances. I mean so much because then like, let's say, for example, not to pick on Andy Rios, but when he comes in at the end of the match and he's performing at, you know, a, a decent level and he misses a couple shots, like there's a lot less pressure on him to perform at that at the highly proficient level, right? Like he can go in, he can take some opportunities, he can have the confidence to maybe take a shot that's not going to be his best shot, but yet still create some attack for the team as well. Matias Almeida on the podium right now. We were going to cut over to the press conference. All right, cool. Let's listen in. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us today. Following the Quakes 4-1 victory over DC United, we are now joined by head coach Matias Almeida. We'll start by taking a few questions in English, followed by a few more in Spanish with no translation. So let's go ahead and get started with Alicia Rodriguez. Thank you very much, uh, Matias. Uh, congratulations on the victory tonight. Uh, off the top, I was wondering if, in your opinion, this is the most uh, complete performance or the most complete victory that uh, the team has posted since you've been with San Jose. I know there's been uh, some really great wins over the years, but this this one felt um, pretty comprehensive. So I'm wondering uh, your thoughts on on the victory and, and kind of putting it in perspective. Pregunta si vos pensás que esta victoria fue la mejor victoria más completa desde que llegaste y que sabes que hubo muchas buenas victorias en los últimos años, pero se siente como que esta fue una victoria como muy completa, con muy buenas expresiones de todos, y vos coincidís con eso. Yo creo que las victorias siempre son lindas, dan felicidad. I think that victories are always nice and give you happiness. A mí me causa mucha felicidad cuando vemos reflejado el día del partido lo que entrenamos. Makes me really happy that uh, when on match day we see what we have been working on during the week is reflected in the game. Me da felicidad ver al equipo que, que crece. It gives me happiness that the team is growing. Eh, siempre sabiendo que se pueden corregir cosas. Always keeping in mind that you can correct things. Pero también sé que es una victoria, es un partido nada más y queda muchísimo por delante. Pero sí, eh, me pone feliz por, por, por todos. But it's a, just a victory and there's still lots ahead, lots of games ahead, but it makes me really happy for everybody. Thank you, Matias. Next question from Alex Morgan. Unmuted. Muted. Hoy Kate metió otro gol y, y dos asistencias. ¿Qué, ¿Qué le decís en un momento así cuando se ve que él tiene tanta confianza y si pensás que él puede seguir eh, con estas eh, actuaciones eh, ayudando tanto al equipo metiendo goles y dando asistencia con tanto éxito? Bueno, primero me da felicidad por él. First it makes me happy for him. Porque si juega es porque lo merece. Because if he's playing it's because he deserves it. Eh, Repito lo mismo que hace una semana atrás, él escucha. I'll repeat what I said uh, last week, he él, listens. Él es humilde. And he's humble. Y él sabe que tiene que seguir creciendo, que esta es la manera. And he knows that he has to keep growing and this is the way. Eh, está coronando sus actuaciones con, con gol y con, con pase de gol. He's crowning uh, his actions with goals and assists. Pero lo más difícil en el fútbol es mantenerse en ese nivel. But the hardest thing in football is holding that level. Entonces lo llevaremos con mucha tranquilidad como hasta ahora. So we'll take him there very calmly like we have up till now. Eh, y él está defendiendo el puesto que, que se ha ganado. And he's defending his spot that he's won. La única manera que tiene de mantener eso es jugando con este nivel que tiene. The only way he can do that is by playing this left by at this level that he has. Cuidándose en su vida privada como se cuida. Taking care of himself in his personal life the way he does. Y entrenando de la manera que entrena. And training the way he trains. 
pero rescato su humildad, lo vuelvo a repetir. But ¿no? I, es consciente del momento. Pero también sabe que yo miro mucho esa parte. But he also knows that I look at that part a lot. Thank you, Matias. Next question from Jamin Moore. Hi, Coach. Good evening, and congratulations on the win. Thank you. I'm uh, curious because I believe this is the earliest goal scored since you became coach of this team. When you score a goal in the first minute, clearly, as you're game planning, you probably don't expect early success in a match like that. How do you, what type of instruction do you give to the team when you score a goal so early uh, in order to make sure that you stick to the game plan? Thank you. It's okay. Él piensa que este es el gol más temprano que metió el equipo desde que llegaste. Cuando, un equipo, cuando el equipo mete el gol al primer minuto, ¿qué indicaciones le das al equipo para seguir y si cambia algo que de lo que planificaste? No, bueno, siempre es muy bienvenido un gol tan temprano. Such an early goal is always very welcome. Pero valoro porque le habíamos mostrado que el contragolpe debía ser para lastimar como fue. But I value it because we showed that the counter should be the way that it was done. Sabíamos que íbamos a robar en la zona que robamos. We knew that we would steal the, in the place that we stole. Y que teníamos que estar preparados para ir a lastimar. And we have to be ready to go and hurt them. Hay miles de acciones que sucede lo mismo y no terminan en gol. There's thousands of plays where the same thing happens and it doesn't finish with a goal. Pero creo esa calidad de Chofi. But I think that quality that Chofi has. Que no perdonó. He, and he didn't forgive them. Después si hicimos el gol temprano la mentalidad nuestra era como que Sí, vamos 0 a 0. And then after we score uh, an early goal, our mentality is that we're still 0-0. Eh, por eso seguimos, por eso queríamos más. That's why we kept going and that's why we went more. Bueno, obtuvimos, digamos, lo que fuimos a buscar. And we achieved, we went and looked for it. Thank you, Matias. One last question in English from Fabian Rinkle. Thank you, Matias. I'm in for your time. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. What did you tell the team at halftime and how did you feel going into the second half? ¿Qué le dijiste al equipo en el entretiempo y cómo te sentiste cuando arrancó el segundo tiempo? Bueno, el, eh, corregimos algunas, algunos movimientos que, que teníamos que, que mejorar. We corrected some movements that we had to improve. Vimos que iban a hacer cambios, que la línea de 5 se iba a transformar en línea de 4. We thought they were going to make subs and they were going to change their back line of 5 to a back 4. Y bueno, pudimos eh, tener un poco más, por momento, el control del juego. And for moments we were able to have control of the game a bit more. Pero sabíamos que cada ataque que teníamos era para seguir lastimando. But we knew that each time we, had, we attacked, we had to keep hurting them. Pero valoro mucho la concentración de los jugadores. But I really value the concentration of the players. Y las ganas de nunca rendirse por más que vayan ganando. And the desire to never give up even when they're winning. Thank you, Matias. We are going to take two questions in Spanish now. First, with Carlos Ramirez. Matías, ¿cómo te va? Buenas noches. Buenas noches, Carlos. Eh, hemos hablado muchas veces, Matías, tú y yo, de, de que los equipos se parecen a sus técnicos. Y no sé si coincides conmigo que en el partido anterior y en este, eh, a mí por lo menos son las veces que más he visto a Matías Almeida plasmado en su equipo, en dos situaciones muy puntuales. La salvada del Güero y el rescate hoy de Fen Young en la línea que cambiaron el partido. En cómo el Güero persigue el proceso en transición defensiva, en cómo Cristian pierde una pelota y se mata al otro lado para recuperarla, en las cosas que a lo mejor no se ven, pero que a mí, que vi tu carrera completa, me dice, este es Matías Almeida. Tú lo ves así, y si es así, ¿por qué ahora se ve más? Yo creo que hay un poco de eso, porque ni bien llegué a San José que preguntaba por el estilo que íbamos a buscar, eh, que queríamos tener. Yo les respondí a todos ustedes que los equipos míos, los equipos que dirijo yo, mejor dicho, todos corren y todos juegan. Y bueno, ahí se ve reflejado, digamos. Nosotros entrenamos para, para, para jugar, para tener el control, pero también entrenamos para cuando nos toca ese sufrimiento de no tener el balón, de dejar el alma. Y, y los chicos lo están haciendo realmente... Dejan todo, a veces sale bien, a veces más o menos, pero no se le puede negar que ellos, digamos, tienen una responsabilidad grande y una identidad por, por el equipo que defienden. 
Pero ¿qué cambió, Matías? Porque parece que en partidos en el año pasado y en el anterior, cuando llegaba en esos momentos, el equipo se derrumbaba. Y esta versión parece que es lo contrario, se crece en esa adversidad, ¿no? Bueno, el equipo ya lleva la gran mayoría un tiempo de trabajo. Eh, todos nos entendemos, todos tenemos un gran diálogo. Yo rescato mucho el grupo que está. Es un grupo humano muy lindo, un grupo donde se disfruta venir todos los días. Y cuando todos saben que tienen que aportar su granito de arena, ahí se marca una diferencia en los grupos. Bueno, ellos lo, lo entendieron, lo están haciendo. Llegaron jugadores nuevos y que han aportado ese, ese toquecito de calidad. Pero también se adaptaron a un nuevo sistema de juego que tienen que estar bien físicamente para poder disfrutar dentro de un terreno de juego. Gracias, Matías. Gracias. Thank you, Matías. One last question from Alonso Contreras. Thank you, Jay. Uh, ¿Cómo está, profesor? Felicitaciones por el triunfo. Ocho goles en tres partidos. Muchas y gracias. quisiera hacer una pregunta puntual, especialmente por Marcos López, un jugador que ha estado en Perú entrenando, tuvo una para. ¿Cómo sigue físicamente? ¿Cómo se lo ve? Y un jugador que ha sido clave ¿no? en su esquema táctico. Gracias. Sí, bueno, el caso de Marcos es, eh, tuvo una, una lesión la semana pasada. Eh, que lo dejó afuera del partido pasado, ahí está volviendo, pero digamos que el que entró, que es Polmarí, está cumpliendo y no quiere largar el puesto. Bueno, esa es la competencia que necesitamos nosotros. Eh, competencia de verdad, competencia de, de ayudarse y de defender el puesto. Y hay una sola manera, que es entrenando bien y cuando está la posibilidad, no largarla. Y, y bueno, Marcos hoy entró, entró bien. Eh, esto de tener cinco cambios nos permite también... Eh, mantener un, un sistema de juego dinámico y lo importante fue que hoy no sintió nada y que terminó bien los minutos que jugó. All right, thank you very much, Matías and Augustine, and congrats on the victory. Thank you. So there's so much there from Matias Almeida in terms of how much the team is actually enjoying playing with one another. And as we know, Alex, anytime a team has that locker room fill in which they're happy to be around each other, they're working hard in every moment, that makes for a really good product on the field as well. But one thing I wanted to hit on that Matias spoke of, and this is in response to a question that you asked, Alex, in regards to Cade Cowell, is, um, is that he is continuing to work hard and hold his own And, and the hardest thing is going to be to continue to play at that level is one thing that he noted. And also that um, he is defending the spot that he won. I think that was a really important thing to pick up from there because as we just found out recently, going into the first game of the season, it was actually Andy Rios' spot. But because of injury concerns and being held out, Cade Cal came in, stepped in, and he kind of won that spot as well. So it's great to hear the support from Matias Almeida, but at the same time for him to make very clear that he has to work hard to maintain that spot. I think that's important for somebody his age, somebody who's so young in the league and getting his first minutes to understand that as well. Yeah, I mean, that was a really interesting tidbit that we learned this week in, in Matias Almeida's midweek press conference was that Andy Rios was originally slated to start over Cade Cowell and only because Rios picked up a little injury uh, a couple of days before the, the first game did Cade Cowell earn that starting spot uh, and now it's his to keep i mean with what two goals and three assists in the first two games uh he is absolutely on fire uh and uh, I, I, honestly he is san jose's most dangerous offensive weapon right now by far uh you know neither uh D D dc or dallas you know found a way to shut him down he just has too much physicality Uh, he will run by you. He will run through you. Uh, he will push you down. Uh, and yeah, I, I think most MLS center backs are going to struggle uh, in containing uh, Kate Cowell. And I actually think that's one of the reasons why uh, he should stay up top in the number nine role is because uh, in the system that Matias plays, the wingers are asked to track back a lot uh, and, you know, cover Uh, in the man marking system, whereas the number nine has a little more freedom just to wait at the halfway line and, and sort of roam there and look for the pockets and run in behind uh, because he's just absolutely lethal on those counterattacks. It is a sight to behold 
uh, to see him sprinting in and, and bearing down on down on goal on, on a long ball. Uh, and so, yeah, it just feels like it's it's Cade Cowell's moment right now. And Jamin, maybe you can kind of talk a little bit about uh, your question as well. You asked Matias what type of discussion or what did he have to say to the team at halftime and which changes were necessary for the team as they came back out to, for the second half? Yeah, that question actually was was uh, asked by uh, Fabian Rinkle. Um, the, uh, but, I, you know, it's really important when you've got a game where you've got three goals in the first half, that you make sure that you put yourself in a position for the second half to not come out you know lazy and one of the things that we saw about the earthquakes in 2020 quite often was they would play a really good first half and the second half things would uh, immediately they would give up a goal uh in the first five ten minutes of the second half and get all of a sudden back on the back foot again and i'm sure matias has that going in the back of his mind thinking um, you know, that I don't want to see that happen here because this could, this game could very easily become 3-2. And once it's 3-2, anything can happen in MLS. I mean, we've all seen, you know, what can happen on some of these late night and midweek. And, you know, there's a reason MLS after dark is a hashtag, right? Because weird things can happen in, in MLS um, in this type of, in this type of situation. Showpiece is uh, joining us, or sorry, Kate Cowell is joining us. Excellent. Let's She's go ahead and go to that. with Jamin Moore. Hi, Cade. How's Congratulations on the win. You had a goal and assist tonight. You seem very confident out there. Took some extra shots. How are you, How did you feel physically and with everything you saw on the pitch tonight? Um, like I said, Matthias always gives me so much confidence to go out there and just be myself and make mistakes. So that's always a plus. And uh, I felt pretty tired towards the end, but I'll, I'll get to full 90 soon. Thank you, Cade. Next question from Alex Morgan. Unmuted. Um, yeah, definitely. So um, my main focus to, is to obviously beat my defender one-on-one. -on -one. The next one is I look up and see where the keeper's at, and I saw he was off his first post. So I kicked as soon as I uh, saw he was off. So it ended very well. So I was happy with that. But that's basically it. Just try and beat the first defender and then look on where the keeper's at. Thank you, Cade. Next question from Alicia Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, Cade, I want to ask as far as your um, development of, of being a professional, at this point, it looks like the game is really slowed down for you. Do you feel like the game is really slowed down for you at this point and, and that you're able to, you know, make decisions quickly and, um, you know, make big plays like you've been doing the last couple of weeks? Um, it's usually, it's definitely like I feel a lot more confident on the ball and like feel more free to make mistakes and not be so perfect. So that definitely helps. And, uh, but up top it's pretty fast and everything. Like I try and play as quick as possible and I'm still learning how to do one touch passes and check it in and all that. But uh, I definitely am uh, more comfortable as the more I play. So that, that helps a lot. Thank you, Cade. We're going to take one last question from John Rojas. Thanks, Jake. Um, Kate, this, this team, DC United, is a team that plays a little different and in some ways is uh, similar to you guys, to the style of play that you guys play. Do you feel any difference with, uh, you know, managing the difference, the 1v1s and the space behind you? Um, there was definitely a lot more space than usual today when they had three in the back because it let me just one-on-one -on -one with the main center back. So that was basically the main thing. Is just, I, That's why I kept making runs behind because I was one-on-one -on -one every time. But other than that, it was it was good. They're a good team and everything, so it was good. All right. Thank you very much, Cade, and congrats on the victory. Yeah, thank you, guys. 
So one thing that I find interesting there is that he says that he continues to find himself one-on-one -on -one every time, which I don't know if that's going to happen much more often uh, against some of the better teams in MLS. But it's good that Cade had that opportunity to play in that fashion. And uh, here's one another thing that I, that I found really interesting is he continues to mention when he answered your question and when he answered Alicia Rodriguez's question. I'll make sure I get the names right this time. <laughs> so he feels free to make mistakes. And again, Jamin, my bad for the... Um, for misquoting you on the last one, you and Fabi were one after the other, and so <laughs> no, it's perfectly that okay. now we're like right next to each other on the notes. But <laughs> well, he, had, he had he had a very relevant question, uh, and and I right. felt like you know this was this was a game that when you've got a three one kind of choke hold on a game at halftime, a two goal advantage, whether it's two zero, three one, four two, doesn't really matter. It's very important that you come out the right way in the second half. And again, we, as we've mentioned, you know, last season that was that was the particular problem area. I was uh, I was really interested by that uh, by that last question to Cade and, and how he was saying that uh, he was one on one more tonight than than he has been. He found more space out there, and he kept making the runs because he feels that confidence when he goes one on one. But I mean, how many times do we see him try to go like? 1v3, 1v4, 1v5 tonight. So, you know, that confidence, you know, after he, he I think, got that first goal, like, he just felt like he could take on the world. You want that in a nine. And so, you know, we I think it's a good conversation we've been having with, with Colin and, and on the show about is his best position a nine or is it on the wing? But he's starting to show what you would want to see in a nine. Um and that doesn't mean he can't play wing and be just as good on the wing. I think that he has flexibility is important. For instance, without Wando tonight, they were able to bring on Andy Rios late. Initially, Andy Rios played on the right, but then he and Cade switched. Andy Rios came central. Cade was able to play on the wing. In fact, the fact that he moved out to the wing was important for the, the second assist that he got to uh, to uh, Jackson Newell because that's that's where he he had been playing in in that moment. So one of those assists came from the wing position tonight, whereas the first goal and assist came from the nine. I don't think it matters. I mean, just put Kate on the pitch, right? Yeah, right. I, I, I absolutely agree, Jamin. Here, Jamin. Oh, real quick, Alex, I just wanted to say that uh, just to reiterate that this is showing the effect that Matias Almeida's philosophy has on these players that they have the freedom to make that movement throughout the pitch as well. Alex. Yeah, I absolutely think so. And, and I think Jamin's right in that you put uh, Kay Carroll on the field and you get him in situations where he's running in behind. And I think what position you play him in would depend on the game. In a game like tonight where there's tons of acreage to run, tons of space in behind, you're going to put him at number nine where he can just uh, sort of hover on the halfway line and, and look for pockets to run. But in a game where the team might sit deeper in a more uh, compact uh, mid block, maybe, uh, maybe you want him out wide uh, and maybe you want a, a number nine, like Chris Wondolowski, who will find pockets of uh, space in the box more. So I think we'll see him in both positions this season. The bottom line is just, he needs to be running down that wing, barreling in on goal because he has the strength to push over the defenders. Uh, and he's shown that he has the vision to also put the balls uh, in the box. And I, I, I also want to pick up on, and one of the things that you guys were talking about earlier, which is, you know, the energy that the Quakes showed at the start of the second half. You know, we also saw that energy at the top of the match where, you know, they scored a goal within the first minute. And for me, that was a huge difference tonight was it felt like they were the aggressors. They were the one pushing, uh, pushing the tempo. Uh, and that hasn't always been the case against Dallas. They started on the back foot. You know, Dallas pressed them high really early, almost scored twice early on. The Quakes were on the back foot and sort of had to work their way into the game. The same thing against Houston. They were sort of shaky at the back. They never looked entirely confident. Tonight felt different. Tonight felt like the Quakes were pushing the tempo right from that first minute when they scored the goal all the way through the end of the match. Even in the second half, they were always the ones pushing. And I think that was just a huge shift in their mindset. And I got to give a lot of credit to Flo for that. He was leading the team throughout the night from the back line. He was continuously getting the fans hype. He was, you know, screaming and celebrating uh, and pushing everyone all over the pitch. Uh, and so even though he's had some tactical issues back there, uh, he's showing right now that he's still an important leader in this team. And you, you got to give him credit for that. Certainly. And you know what? I was just thinking about this, how important it is to have that uh, positivity from a player like Florian Youngworth on the back line because while DC may not have the attacking options 
uh, that the Quakes are going to face during the season. RSL most certainly are, and that's going to be the next game that's coming up as well. And they showed really well in their match tonight. And so that's something that they're definitely going to have to be ready for because RSL is not going to be quite as forgiving as uh, as DC United was during this match tonight. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's going to be an interesting road ahead for the Quakes. I mean, if you just take a look at that schedule, you when you just look at the May portion of the schedule now, you've got Real Salt Lake at home. Uh, I'm sorry, on the road. You've got the Sounders at home. You've got Portland at home. You've got Sporting Kansas City at home. You've got the Galaxy on the road. That's just May. Um, you know, that's going to be, one, it's a packed schedule. And Two, like that's going to be a real test as to where this team is at. I, I, you know, I think that this is a game where you expect to win. DC United is down 11 guys. They've got five guys on the bench. They're traveling from the East Coast. They're basically playing at 11 p.m. on their, their schedule. Um, yes, you should win that game. How they did it is impressive. That they're doing it without really a top game from uh, Christian Espinoza where, you know, last season, if there was going to be creativity, it was pretty much going to come from that right wing. Now, this team is 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 able to spread that around a bit more. Yes, there's a lot on, on Cade Cowell right now, but you also get the feeling like even if Cade had an off night, that there are other pieces that are going to step up. A Jackson Newell here, a showpiece here, and we're going to talk to showpiece here in, in just a little bit. Uh, and maybe that's Espinosa's time to shine. And, you know, you've got, you still got a Carlos Fierro. You still have uh, Eric Rometty. You still have Marcos Lopez who didn't start tonight, right? So you definitely still have a lot of potent options now. And you can kind of see like what was going through their minds in terms of, uh, you know, the preseason and how they felt about focusing on building on, on fixing the back first and why they felt a little bit more confident in what they had up top because these pieces do look like they're going to be pieces that are going to be able to be fluid, be able to work together, be able to get goals from a number of different places. And you had a night where you didn't even have Chris Wondolowski. Yeah. And you know what, going into the next match, I feel a lot more confident about this team offensively coming up against uh, RSL. Uh, but again, I want to reiterate how important it is that they need the optimism and the momentum going forward against the team that just beat Sporting Kansas City three to one and going into Rio Tinto, especially for the Quakes traditionally has been a very difficult task. It's been very difficult to go in there and win. And the <laughs> speaking of momentum, the way the crowd is really supporting the team if you guys i don't know if you saw the aftermath of what happened in the last couple of games for rsl david ochoa kicking the ball into the stands when they're on the road that is now a ritual that they're going to be doing for every match so they do everything they can to get their fans on board with that team and the way they're playing right now when they've got rubio rubin doing really well up top and they have crylock just distributing these uh incredible balls and allowing them to you know open up these opportunities that's something that the quakes are really going to have to look out for so yes i love that florian youngworth had a heck of a performance at moments against dc united i want to continue to see it against rsl and and you know what a shout out to tanner beeson as well because i thought he had a pretty decent game uh more than decent he, he did pretty well out there and he he looked good with florian youngworth as well so just a couple of points to consider as the quakes are looking forward to their next matchup Again, it's important that we celebrate this victory because this was a very, you know, uh, necessary win for them. But there is going to be some uh, tough stuff coming up here on the schedule. Yeah, the West feels a bit topsy turvy, um, at least as of right now. Look, it's only three games in, and of course, the Quakes have had two at home. They now need to go on the road and be able to prove that what's happening at home can be done on the road. A lot of times we see an MLS where you've got fifty-three percent of of, of uh, the home home team games, home team wins, right? So a lot of times you get that kind of home cooking, everyone feels good, the goals are flowing, and then you got to go on the road and be able to do it there. And it's tough. And you're right, you're running into an RSL team that a lot of people picked, uh, experts picked to be at the bottom of the West at the end of the season. And they went into Minnesota and got the job done. Uh, and uh, and uh, Minnesota, on the other hand, having a tough go of it to start the season right now, it does feel like things are changing in the West. LAFC didn't play as well tonight. Um, you know, the Sounders, we're going to need to see like, are, you know, are they going to be for real without Jordan Morris? You know, there's, there's, I think a fair number of questions. Portland, 
is coming out of the gate uh, not playing very well. Um, so the West is quite interesting right now. I think a lot of people thought that it was pretty settled. Um, and I think Freddie Estrada is right here. I, I think the next game is a real test to see if the Quakes, at least in this early season, are for real. And, and I'm specifically looking at their back line right now uh, because this is a, not their starting back line. Uh, they have tonight uh, Paul Marie, uh, Tanner Beeson, Florian Youngworth, and Tommy Thompson. You know, three of those players, I don't think we had pegged as starters because you had Abacasis, who's still not entirely fit. You had, uh, you know, Marcos Lopez, who's still not entirely fit. And tonight, the surprise was that Oswaldo Alaniz uh, was not in the squad. Uh, we heard from a team spokesperson that he was taken out of the squad as a precautionary measure uh, because his knee was bugging him. So we're going to be closely monitoring that situation because I think tonight... Tanner Eason did really well. He had a strong performance. And in fact, he had a really uh, strong uh, goal line clearance that, that was, as Jamin mentioned earlier in the show, that was at a really crucial turning point for this team. So Tanner Eason had a great game. But I think on the goal that DC United scored, it was a set piece, sort of a scrabble in the box. JT Marcinkowski didn't cover himself in glory there. And I think that Oswaldo Alanis, his aerial presence would have helped in that situation. And I think going on the road, you're going to want his confidence and his aerial presence and his composure at the back. Uh, and so I'm watching out for that. Thankfully, we did see Albacasis and Lopez get in late on uh, in the game. Uh, and so hopefully they will both be fit soon uh, as well. Now, I actually think that you know, they're going to have to fight for their starting spots because Paul Marie has been playing uh, pretty well. As Marcelo says here uh, in the comments, uh, Paul Marie Completely has been agree. playing like a starter. He scored that uh, absolute worldie against Houston. And I think his defensive awareness has improved a lot uh, this season. I think he had a couple moments tonight where he might have overcommitted. But yeah, I, I, I think that Abacasis and Lopez are going to have to win their starting uh, li lineup spots back because, you know, you, you, if it's not broken... Uh, Almeida is uh, not going to want to change anything. I think hey guys, that Paul Marie okay. has a bulletin board at home of Alex Morgan quotes from the show <laughs> and from Black and the Soul last season, using it as motivation right now. That's so funny. Hey, I want you guys to do me a favor real quick and look at the Western Conference standings. Listeners, viewers, Alex, Jamin, look at the Western Conference standings. Who's on the top of the Western Conference standings right now after three games? San Jose is, a, is on the top. So there's there's another little bit for you, all right, to carry off with you tonight as you go to bed because it is late. And Colin probably would have been on the show with us tonight, except it's like one in the morning in Washington, D.C., where he's at. So. And thank you so much to everybody for sticking with us. Uh, if you're here, yeah. you're a true fan, and we appreciate it. Um, honestly, uh, I, I you know, uh, yes, we can we can easily say, and and I think someone was saying, hey, we're 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 media doubters. Um, sure, I think we're we're trying to be realists here, but I, I think that this is an, an opportunity, a, a moment that the fans should really celebrate. The fans of San Jose have had very little to cheer about over the last few years. Chris Wondolowski obviously has been uh, something to cheer about, uh, breaking breaking the, the record, and and we've had that to hang on to in San Jose, right? But what you're seeing right now with with Kate Cowell has the opportunity to be something incredibly special. And the Quakes fans have every right to rub it in everyone's face that they're top of the West right now. And they've got the most exciting 17-year-old player that the, that the league has seen in quite Enjoy some time. It, folks. Enjoy it. I, I hope, I hope everyone has a lot, a lot of fun and enjoys it. And I will say that, you know, I think the team is capitalizing on that right now. In the past, the team has tried to tamper, I, I think, some of the excitement, uh, tried to temper, sorry, some of the excitement about Cowell and try to, you know, sort of slow the hype train down just a little bit so that we don't get out ahead of ourselves. Uh, but now I think they're going full steam ahead in, in promoting the Cade Cowell content because I think there's been a flip switch and they recognize that this is his moment. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, you know, what the Quakes are selling. You know, he's a, a young player who's sort of been simmering for the last couple of years and now this is his moment. And I think that's sort of how the team are trying to position themselves as a team that have been simmering for the last couple of years, but now this is their year uh, to shine and take center stage. Alex, can we get, can we get Jesus Cano's uh, comment up on the, up on the screen real quick? 
<laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> I loaded up on Cade Cal rookie cards. Glad he's balling out. So, what's up, Jesus? Thanks for joining hey, us. Uh, Jesus, by the way, a, uh, a has uh, has written for uh, Quakes Up the Center before. So good to see a, a former yeah. writer join the show there. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for joining us. Yep. Jesus, Pittsburgh native, doing his thing down at Fresno State. So keep doing it, Jesus. I'm glad you're joining us tonight. All right, we're still waiting on Chofis. He's going to be the last person stepping up here uh, for the press conference. And we'll go over to that as soon as he's uh, as soon as he is available. But until then, we're going to keep discussing the match. So uh, one thing that we haven't discussed too much, guys, if I can go on to another point here, is the chemistry that we're seeing developing between Jackson Ewell and Eric Rometty. I think that's really important. I know after the first match, a lot of people had questions about Rometty's performance. Matias said right off the bat, look, I'm happy with what he did out there on the field. He did everything I asked of him. A lot of fans weren't as happy to see it. And then Jackson Yule was one of the other people that we had an opportunity to ask questions of after that first match. And he said, look, um, I, there is progress for us to make, but we're going to get there. I believe that he has the talent. I believe that it's going to get better. And I think tonight we really saw that between these players. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. I think we had some doubts about Jackson Yule's performance last week against Dallas, he was pretty quiet. And, you know, he answered those doubts tonight uh, with his, uh, you know, two goals. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to see him getting further up the field. I'm excited to see, you know, what can happen uh, if uh, he's released to play further forward, um, because I think that he has the vision and, you know, he's shown that he now has the finishing uh, to make a contribution uh, up there as well. And yeah, I, I was just excited to see how fluid the Quakes were uh, in the midfield and how it wasn't just Jackson and Rometty and, and Judson in there. Andy Rios, when he came on, uh, was also interchanging with Cade Cowell a lot. And, you know, Fierro and Espinosa are also changing sides very frequently in the game. So the Quakes have a lot of options right now to unlock the defense. Uh, and that's a huge change from what it's been like in the last two years where you felt like their entire game plan was to give it to Christian Espinosa and then get cutbacks in the box for Chris Wondolowski. Heck, Chris Wondolowski wasn't even on the squad tonight. He had a red card suspension because of the red card that he got against Dallas. Right, so you bring back Chris Wondolowski, get him in the rotation too. Uh, and this team, you know, looks like they have a lot of offensive weapons. And again, it's just a matter of, you know, can they do it against teams like RSL away? Can they do it against teams like Minnesota United uh, and LAFC, stronger teams that have historically had their number? And Jamin, uh, if you wanted to jump in here as well in regards to Remedy and Yule, are you ready to move on to the next topic as we're waiting for Chofis? Well, there's a there's a few fans who have been uh, putting some stats up here, and I don't really I'm not really in the position to like check everyone. So I'm going to assume that people are are giving us good information here. But uh, FM Inc. here asked what was the expected goals for the match, and this is one of the interesting things about I think game state. Uh, from an ex expected goals, uh, I have my own expected goals model. This is not mind this is straight off of the website right now but the expected goals for the night dc united had 1.7 and the quakes had 1.6 at least according to the mls uh, website which i believe is opta i.e stats perform uh numbers i'll i'll check my own numbers here tomorrow and see uh, see how they match up to that but dc united did get off uh several shots there was a lot of times so several times where jt was called into action not all of those were dangerous situations, but there were two or three of those uh, type situations. There was a miss, for instance, that was a, a 0.33 expected goals in the second half and, and a couple other uh, shots that uh, were, were pretty good. Um, but one of the things that uh, was mentioned a bit earlier, and I apologize we didn't get to it as it was being said, was that this is the first time that the Quakes have had a positive goal differential in April since 2016. That's a long time. And we know that one of the things that we've talked about in the preseason quite a bit um, was that this team needed to find ways to score more goals than they gave up. And they needed to watch those set piece goals. Again, we saw the set piece goal kind of come back to bite tonight, right? That's going to be something to watch. And again, with the RSL next week and some of these other dangerous opponents coming up, we're going to find out if the Quakes have probably figured out the set piece issue or if we're going to see some breakdowns like we, we saw you know, tonight. I think that's an, that's an important one to watch. 
But right now, when you're scoring three, four goals a game, it's probably good enough to to be able to outscore any opponent. If if the Quakes defense can continue to give up, let's say, 1.5 or fewer goals a game, they've got a pretty good chance in, in being able to keep a positive goal differential. Uh, so for sure, with throughout the season, we'll see that. Also, I think someone mentioned the uh, the first back-to-back home wins in quite some time. I believe someone said 2017. I don't have the ability to check that information. Uh, but uh, it does feel like it's been a while for back-to-back home wins. And uh, that's got to feel pretty good. We want to see the team probably get back to that Avaya Castle. Like we want to see a situation in which teams feel intimidated walking into this place. It's been a while since that's really been the case. So maybe uh, you're talking about Avaya Castle. You guys can kind of elaborate on the feeling in the stadium tonight. Alex, when we started the show, you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but maybe you can give a few more details now. I'm not with you guys, so I don't know what it's like to actually just go up into the press box and perhaps be stuck there. Maybe you guys have a chance to walk around. Like, Kind of detail what it was like to be in the stadium tonight when the team scores right off the bat in the first minute, and it seemed like the energy was going nonstop. I mean, the atmosphere was electric, Phil. Uh, and even though it's it's only 20% uh, capacity, 2025, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, it felt really electric. Uh, and... You know, honestly, in the last two, three years, the capacity really hasn't been much larger than that anyways. I, I don't remember the last time the team sold out this this stadium. So it feels it feels pretty normal to me, but we're going to get you know, a that's, that's right now in the press. That's say that because I feel like the uh, – oh, okay. Well, let's go ahead and go over to Chopis, and we'll talk about that after. Chopis, ¿cómo estás? Felicidades en, en la victoria. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. ¿Cómo te sientes cuando terminas un partido en San José comparado cuando estabas en Guadalajara? Gracias. Hola, buenas noches. Y bueno, primero que nada, me siento feliz, obviamente, por, por la victoria. Eh, feliz por, por el equipo, por, porque conseguimos una victoria más. Y más allá de, de eso, cómo me siento aquí o cómo me siento en Chivas, creo que <coughs> son diferentes cir circunstancias y yo ahorita estoy aquí y solo estoy disfrutando este momento y con el equipo que, que me toca estar. Y, y bueno, te reitero que, que gracias a Dios logramos otro triunfo y, y bueno, este es el, el, los frutos, el fruto de, de todo el trabajo que que venimos haciendo la semana. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, the question was on how he feels now versus how he felt when he was um, with Chivas, uh, to which the player responded. Uh, first and foremost, good evening. Uh, just very happy to be here right now. Uh, very happy with uh, tonight's win and where we're going. Uh, beyond the uh, comparison, just solely focused on on this, this uh, squad and uh, where, where I am right now. Thank you very much. Next question from Carlos Ramirez. Chofi, ¿cómo te va? Carlos Mauricio de Telemundo, un abrazo. ¿Cómo estás, Carlos? Ya, ya, ya reconocí tu voz. <laughs> <laughs> un abrazo, un abrazo. Eh, ¿Qué ves en Kate Cowell? ¿A, ¿A quién se te parece? ¿A quién te recuerda? ¿Y qué potencial le ves? Es un jugadorazo que... Creo que, que hay que llevarlo de poco, poco a poco. Creo que, que tiene el, el mejor entrenador que, que puede tener a, en este momento y creo que Matías lo va a ayudar muchísimo. Matías, Matías sabe, sabe cómo llevar. Creo que va a saber cómo llevar a Kate. Eh, la verdad que, que es un jugadorazo. Eh, y no tengo duda que Eh, que todo le va a ir bien en, en, en su carrera solo hay que hay que llevarlo de poco a poco no porque yo creo que por ahí muchos jugadores empiezan bien y ya después se apagan un poquito entonces él es un jugadorazo tiene un potencial muy grande para para hacer una figura so for everyone the question was on his thoughts on K Cow uh, to which Chopis responded uh, I think he's just an absolute baller uh, I think we just need it. He's got to take it 
a little slow. Um, I think that he has the best head coach that he can have. Matias knows how to coach him, um, and he's going to help him a lot. So uh, just a great baller, um, great player. He's going to have a great career. He just has to take it little by little, but he's going to be an absolute amazing player. Thank you, Chofis. We're going to take two more questions, starting with Alex Morgan. Unmuted. Uh, hola, Chofis. Congratulations on uh, the victory and on the goal. Um, how did it feel to score your first goal in Major <laughs> League Soccer? And also, you know, what do you think are the things that have made you successful so far? Tonight we saw you uh, dropping back, I think, a little deeper into the midfield uh, to pick up the ball and play it forward. So I'm curious – you know, what are the things that you, you think have made you successful so far? Muted. Eh, que felicidades por tu primer gol. Eh, eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo te sentiste bien el partido? Y, y este, si notas una diferencia en, en el esquema de, de, de tu juego, eh, dice que te notó un poco más en la parte defensiva, como que bajaste un poco en el partido, así que si te afectó, si, si te sentiste mejor, ¿cómo lo viste? Hola, muchas gracias por la felicitación. Y, y bueno... Creo que por ahí voy a retomando mi nivel para estar muy bien físicamente al 100%. Por ahí creo que uno no, no puedo jugar a buen ritmo los 90 minutos todavía. Tenía un año, tres meses aproximadamente que no, que no tenía participación. Y, y ahí lo platicé con Matías, me va a llevar de, de poco a poco. Todavía hay mucho, mucho camino por recorrer y, y bueno, lo importante... Lo importante es que, que voy recuperando mi nivel, como tú le dices, si sí, tengo más sacrificio para defender, que como lo tenía antes con Matías, y bueno, lo voy recuperando de poco a poco. No, no ha sido nada fácil, la verdad, pero, pero bueno, lo importante es que, que poco a poco todo esto, todo mi trabajo que he venido haciendo, por ahí se va, se va viendo, ¿no? <coughs> Um, yeah, just, uh, well, first, thank you for the congratulations. Um, but yes, you're right. Uh, it's, I'm working on, on building my rhythm. Um, it's been just over a year and three months um, without having um, the form that I, that I would like. So I'm working on that. Uh, I'm, I'm in content, uh, constant communication with Matias, and he's been helping me overall. So uh, I'm just looking to take it little by little, uh, take it by steps. Um, continuing to, to build that rhythm, and I think I definitely feel a lot better now. So uh, I've made many sacrifices ever since. It's not easy, uh, but I think the most important part is where I am today, and I'm uh, just looking to take it little by little. Thank you very much. One final question from Jamin Moore. Hello, Chofis. Congratulations on the win. Congratulations on the goal. Um, I'm interested in your uh, uh, connection right now in the midfield with uh, Eric Rometty and Jackson Ewell, and then obviously Kate Cowell in front of you. Uh, now that you've had three games, what is your feeling about uh, the, the players that you're playing with? Um, and what is your feeling overall about, uh, about MLS and the league in general? What is it that you notice about it the most? Thank you. Eh, la pregunta de él es tu conexión con Jackson, eh, con Eric en la media cancha y obviamente con Kate arriba en frente de ti. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo te has sentido con ellos ahora en esos partidos? ¿Y, si, y cómo va tu perspectiva de, de la liga de la MLS? Eh, ¿Cómo la ves ahora que ya estás involucrado en ella? Sí, la verdad me, me he encontrado muy bien con ellos de poco a poco, obviamente. <coughs> y creo que lo vamos a partido tras partido vamos a ir mejorando encontrándonos mejor entre entre que entre que eh, Jackson Eric que son unos jugadorazos que, que la verdad <coughs> aportan mucho al equipo para adelante para defender eh, creo que creo que jugando jugando bien te te, te atrae a ti un poquito, como, como lo decía ahorita, un poquito de que defiendo. Es, es así porque me veo a mis compañeros y me dan ganas, ¿no? Me dan ganas de ayudarlos. Y porque para defender son unos, 
son como unos leones, ¿no? Entonces, para atacar, lo hacen muy bien. Entonces, el equipo está muy completo. El equipo es buen grupo. Todo, todos, los, todos los compañeros, ¿verdad? Que, que, que aportan mucho al equipo. Hacen un grupo muy bien. Y por eso es que nos va muy bien, ¿no? Entonces, no tengo duda que, que nos va a ir muy bien este torneo. Uh, yeah, just um, they're all great players. I've been getting to to know them a lot more, and I've been feeling a lot more confident playing with them on the field. So, uh, Kate, Eric, Jackson, they're all uh, amazing players, great players. Uh, they add a lot to this team, and their work gives me a lot of motivation. Um, they're they're almost like lions when they're defending. So um, that definitely it reaches it reaches you, and um, and I try to support them sometimes by dropping back a little and defending, like I was asked a, little, um, a couple questions ago. Uh, so just very, very happy to play along with them and, um, and continuing uh, to to build on that. And uh, I don't have a doubt that um, that this is this is going to be a great year for us. So just overall excited. All right, thank you very much, Trophies. That is all the time we have today. And congrats on the victory. All right, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to you guys, Alex and Jamin, once he gets back in here regarding the Chofis uh, aspect of the press conference. If there's anything else you want to add, in, in my eyes, I thought it was a lot of professional answers. I thought he said a lot of the things that we would normally expect of players to, to say in such a situation. Uh, so Alex, Jamin, if there's anything you want to add on to there before we move on to the last couple parts of the show. I mean... I think that there were a lot of concerns about his discipline uh, and about his professionalism um, going into this season because of the way he left Chivas. Um, you know, he, he was suspended by Chivas uh, because of, you know, off field incidents uh, and, you know, various, uh, you know, behavioral in in incidents and conduct that he had. Uh, but we haven't seen that, you know, really at all uh, yet. He had that one kick out in the Houston game. Uh, but off the field, it, it seems like he's working very, very hard. Matias Almeida uh, you know, seems like it, it is the right manager to help get the best uh, out of Chofis. And, uh, yeah, he, he had a great goal tonight. Uh, he seems really confident uh, and comfortable in, in the middle. Uh, and, and I'm happy to hear, uh, you know, all the, uh, you know, the insight he's giving in that press conference. Uh, before you jump in here, Jamin, I want to just answer a question really quickly that was put into the comments on YouTube. John Jay asks, or he says, ask him if he thinks in and out slaps. My only answer to that is uh, food doesn't slap. Jamin? That was not the answer, Mario. I thought you were going to go with that. Um, no, I, I, you know, I think uh, obviously we see that uh, Shofis is adjusting. He's, he seems happy. He, what, uh, he really likes about his teammates is not uh, like their attacking creativity. It's how hard they work on the defensive side of the ball that pushes him to also put himself into that next level as well. It's Max. There you go. Marcelo always bailing us out. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Marcelo. By the, by the way, I just have to say that, uh, that Pedro, who does the uh, translation tonight, my goodness, we asked a lot of him, particularly in that last yes, question. And I he was thinking is that too. absolutely amazing. We love Pedro, um, but uh, but no, it's 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 interesting that that's what motivates him is how hard his teammates work, and what we can say right now about this team is that everybody is bought in, everybody is working hard, and that's why the product on the field is showing it uh, the way that it is right now. Now, you know, when this team experiences a couple losses, we're going to find out what they're made of because in past seasons. They've allowed that to kind of get to them. They've allowed themselves, you know, to lose confidence and to, to feel like there was no way out. In fact, one time last year, Matias said, I don't even know what to do at this point. Like, you know, I don't know how to get us out of this. I've never been in this position in my career. So, you know, the test of this team, I mean, our assault is going to definitely be that test. But the real test of this team is what's going to happen when undoubtedly at some point, they lose a couple of those games back to back. And how are they going to, to, to react in that type of situation is going to be quite interesting. I do think this month of May, we're going to find out uh, probably what this team is made of, not because I'm going to say they're going to lose two straight games, 
but because I think we're going to have the opportunity to be able to do this. Fans, it's late at night. Thank you for staying with us. You guys can do whatever you like in the chat. We love you. Thank you for, for staying yeah, with Yeah, totally us. joking, by the way, John. Not, not trying to shut you down. I just know from living in the Bay Area for the last decade and having taught high school for several years in the Bay Area, that's just one of those things. So anyway, <laughs> let's talk about uh, JT Marcinkowski because I think that's the last thing that we have for our game analysis. So just to toss it over to you guys really quickly, I have here that he had five saves during the match. Uh, what else would you like to add to your analysis of JT? I, I think that his shot stopping was, was really good. I'm a little concerned about his confidence uh, in those aerial situations. He kind of came out and flapped uh, at the the cross for the goal that uh, DC United scored. Uh, and he's felt a little more shaky this season in, in the box on uh, those set pieces. Uh, definitely not as strong or, or as confident as he looked uh, last year. So, uh, you know, hopefully he can regain his footing a little bit and look at, I mean, it hasn't cost the quakes at, at this point this season. So I'm not unduly concerned to qualified for the Olympics. He would have been there with them. Uh, and, you know, he might've been the starting goalkeeper for them. Uh, and so, you know, he's another guy who, if he performs really, really well over the next couple of years, could be looking at a move to Europe. Uh, so it's important to see, to, to look out for his growth path going forward. Sure. Jamin, last thoughts on JT before we move on. Yeah, I, I agree with Alex for the most part uh, on JT. He, you know, he's not he's not handing the opposition a goal a game right now, and so that by itself, you know, to be very clear, the it. answer is not Daniel Vega. The answer is not Daniel Vega. I am very just to make it abundantly clear. I want JT to stay in goal. The answer is not Daniel Vega. Just wanted to get that off my chest. Yeah, the one I'm thing I'm because there's a fly around my head. I'm not. I'm not discounting what you're saying. I totally agree with you. The the one the one thing that that I do want to see a little bit more from JT is I want him to clean up some of the passing. So he's been he's playing those those kind of chip balls, and, and Armando's right on it here. His ball distribution so far this season is not what we know he's capable of doing, and what he showed last season. I think what we saw last season is the real JT Marcinkowski as far as his footwork goes. I'm hoping that it's just a grow into the season thing maybe grow into some of the new players and understanding where they're going to be. But right now he's a bit off target with, with where his longer balls in particular are going. And uh, that's going to be something that I'm pretty sure that he's going to be focused on trying to clean up and, uh, and get back to where that was last season. When we saw him, for instance, against uh, LAFC on the road last year in the game that the Quakes came back, one of the real differences in that game was JT giving them the ability to uh, be able to play out because he's able to hit the balls out to the wings with uh, confidence and with pace uh, before the defense can react to those situations. And it gives the Quakes an additional uh, push in the attack and, and an additional weapon to be able to break the types of presses that they're facing right now. Right now, a lot of JT's balls are going out of play um, and that needs to be that needs to be cleaned up pretty quickly. Okay, uh, so we are at the end of the show, and I want to make sure that we shout out the social media. So uh, you could follow Quakes Epicenter at Quakes Epicenter. That is who is presenting this show, The Aftershock. You can follow Alex Morgan at Quakes Talk. Is that right, Alex? Quakes, Quakes talk. underscore talk on Twitter. Quakes underscore talk. Thank you for that correction there. And then Jay Moore Quakes for Jamin. Cool. And I also wanted to mention Michael Yu, who commented on the Quakes Epicenter post for tonight's match. He said, uh, okay, give me some credit. I have predicted that. His original tweet was, going to be a thorough wrecking, 4-1 to one goals from Cade Cal, Fierro, and Chofis Espinoza, at least two assists. Not too far off there, Michael, so good on you for making that call. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up here is the website. You can find us at www.quakesepicenter.com. And on Quakes Epicenter, if you'd like to support the show, you'd like to support the website, the great writing that's on there from folks like uh, Jamin and Alex, and we have Robert Jonas and Colin Etnire and tons of great content. You can support it by joining the Patreon. It's only $2 a month for our lowest tier. With that, you get sneak peeks and early releases of upcoming content and patron-only polls on content ideas. We also have a $5 tier. You get everything in the supporter package, plus access to raw, uncut press conference video or audio, access to special player clips analyzing elements of their play, and access to our patron Slack, which is where we have discussions off uh, off the air. With the game chat the is amazing. You it is a lot really of fun. 
you really brought it tonight. And people just love to sit in the stands and and have us and, and chat with us as they're sitting in the stands. It's been a ball. Five dollars a month, and you can join us on the Slack. It's a you lot get, of fun. You get all of the takes that are too spicy for Twitter. Absolutely, all the dumb stuff that I say goes on there, and it—I mean, not that I say a bunch of smart stuff on here, but anyway, there's one more tier, the upper tier, the never say die level. If you're really into the show, if you're really into supporting Quakes Epicenter and the the Quakes content that we are producing for fifteen dollars a month, you get everything in the supporter, the super supporter package, and as a thank you, a special place on our website, including a short description of you and your background with soccer. And we are working on some new merchandise as we have a run out of the scarves. We'll keep you posted when we have that as well, all going into that part of the package. So that is the end of the show. I wanna thank you all for tuning in on YouTube. You guys have been awesome. There are a lot of great comments, uh, just now catching up on reading them. And if you were listening on the podcast, thanks for listening in. Good night and go Quakes.